All right, folks, we've got some big news that came in yesterday regarding Russia, and uh, we should talk about this. Now, if you are watching this video long after this news broke in Russia, I think this is still going to be very valuable for you because it's going to help you to contextualize a much bigger issue that we need to really put some analysis to. And I think it's really important for us to understand everything as a whole. So we're going to go over this deadly attack in Russia. We're going to go over the news story, but then I'm going to provide some analysis that I think is critically important to understanding the bigger scenario here, what the bigger picture is, because there are some biblical issues here that we have to stop and focus on for just a second. And hopefully it will be able to better put a pin on the geopolitics related to the issue that we're actually seeing surfacing right now, because it's touching up on a lot of things. Uh, one related to something that we see in the book of Revelation regarding the increase in the persecution of Christians. The other thing that relates to the subject that we read about in Ezekiel 38 and how we continue to see the theater uh, stage sort of being set for what we know will be the theater of war in that moment. And of course, it also touches up on some other issues that we should just spend a few minutes talking about. So we'll start here with the story. And the story is a... Uh, Sad one, actually. As I'm reading it on Friday, and of course, this is being recorded on the same day the story happened, but you're going to see it the next day. It says, at least 40 dead, 145 hurt in Russia concert hall raid. Uh, now, let me read this to you. It says, several assailants burst into a large concert hall in Moscow on Friday and sprayed the crowd with gunfire, killing at least 40 people, injuring more than 100 and setting fire to the venue in a brazen attack just days after Vladimir Putin cemented his grip on power in a highly orchestrated electoral landslide. Now, it's interesting because we don't know if this uh, attack is directly related to the uh, election that took place in Russia. Uh, but there's a bigger issue to be drawing some inferences from. And look at what it says here. It says the Islamic State group uh, claimed responsibility for the attack. This is ISIS-K, by the way, that's doing this. The Islamic State group uh, claimed responsibility for the attack in a statement posted on affiliated channels on social media, which couldn't be independently verified. It was immediately clear what happened to the attackers after the raid, which Moscow Mayor Sergei Sobain uh, described in a huge or described as a huge tragedy and state authorities were investigating uh, as terrorism. The attack, which left the concert hall in flames with a collapsing roof, was the deadliest in Russia in years and came as the country's war in Ukraine dragged into a third year. The Kremlin said that Putin was informed about the raid minutes after the assailants burst into the Crocus City Hall. That's the name of the uh, of the concert hall a large music venue on Moscow's western edge uh, that can accommodate 6,200 people. The attack took place as crowds gathered for a performance by the Russian rock band Panic. Oh, no, sorry, I read that wrong. It's the Russian rock band Picnic, as Russia's Federal Security Service reported 40 dead and over 100 injured. Some Russian news reports suggested more than, uh, more than that could have been trapped by the blaze that erupted after the assailants threw explosives. Health authorities released a list of 145 injured, 115 of them hospitalized, including five children. Video from outside showed the building on fire with a huge cloud of smoke rising through the night sky, and the street was lit up by the blinking blue lights of dozens of fire trucks, ambulances, and other emergency vehicles as several fire uh, helicopters buzzed overhead to dump water on the blaze that took hours to contain. The prosecutor's office said several men in combat fatigues entered the concert hall and fired on concert goers. Repeated volleys of gunfire could be heard in videos posted by Russian media and on telegram channels. One showed two men with rifles moving through the venue. Another showed a man inside the auditorium saying the assailants had set it on fire as gunshots rang out increasingly in the background. Other videos showed up, uh, uh, showed up to four attackers armed with assault rifles and wearing caps, shooting, screaming people uh, at blank, uh, point blank range. Guards at the concert hall didn't have guns and some could have been killed at the start of the attack 
uh, which was reported by Russian media. Some Russian news outlets suggested the assailants fled before special forces and riot police arrived. Reports said uh, police patrols were looking for several vehicles the attackers could have used to escape. Um, this is really interesting. Let me read this section of this article to you. It says, in a statement posted by uh, Amak News Agency, the Islamic State group said it attacked a large gathering in uh, Krasnokok on Moscow's outskirts, killing and wounded hundreds. It was not immediately possible to verify the authenticity of the claim. Earlier this month, so in other words, ISIS is in essence claiming responsibility for this. They're trying to figure out if it's the same attack and so on and so forth. And by the way, according to this article, there are many statements that say uh, that these ISIS people claim to actually commit this attack because of the rise or the presence of Christians in Moscow, and that it's a, a particular problem for those that are in ISIS. Now, I don't know what the actual attack was caused by. We don't know the players involved. It's really too early to be able to understand what's actually happening. But the thing that I'm observing, and again, so many of the words that I just read to you are very unverified, right? By the time you're watching this video, there may be a whole lot more that are dead. There may be less. We don't know for sure. And the facts behind this may be something substantially different. I can give you an example of this. I was meeting with my team earlier when I heard the initial news reports, and I thought that maybe this was something that was related to Ukraine. I don't know. Uh, we do have this terrorist organization that's claiming responsibility for this, but the reality of it is it will probably be a very long time until we actually find out what the real cause is of all of this and what the implications are behind the people and their motives who actually did this. But there are some things that we can observe immediately within the context of all of this that actually matter. The first thing that I want you to observe is look at the nations that are actually very silent about this and almost applauding it to a degree and look at the nations that are condemning it. And while you look at the different nations that are doing all of that, I want you to pay attention to what Ukraine's reaction is in all of this and how that's actually beginning to formulate. Because what we're beginning to see when you start to look at the different nations that are reacting in different ways is you will see things that meet up very closely with what will be the future alliances that we know will happen with Russia in the region as they pursue further south, going through Ukraine and eventually into the state of Israel. What's really important and what's really critical here is to understand how quickly and how, um, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, effectively Russia responded in dealing with this situation and how, and I'm just telling you this right now, we're in Saturday, but as I know, as we get into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we start getting into the next few days and weeks, we are going to begin to see policy in Russia change as a result of this attack. How do I know that? Because when the attack that involved Chechen rebels took place in Russia, we saw Russia change the way that they actually did all kinds of things that affected the liberties of the people that live in the country. And I believe that we will see the same thing happening over here. I also believe that this is going to position Putin to begin to take certain positions in certain areas that he will not be frowned upon, which he would have been frowned upon prior to this time, that will give him license to be able to do certain things that some people will just simply associate with what actually just happened recently, as opposed to another step or another move in the direction of what we read about potentially in Ezekiel 38 in the future. So all of this stuff is really important to understand and to know what's going on. What do I think is going to happen in the middle of all of this? Okay, well, let's talk about another portion of this article, okay? Let me read this, uh, uh, these few paragraphs because this is really important and then I'll put some context behind it, okay? It says, the Kremlin didn't immediately blame anybody for the attack, but some Russian lawmakers were quick to accuse Ukraine of being behind it and called for ramping up strikes. Hours before the attack, the Russian military launched a sweeping barrage on Ukraine's power system, crippling the country's biggest hydroelectric plant and other energy facilities and leaving more than a million people without electricity. Dmitry 
uh, Medvedev, deputy head of Russia's Security Council, which, by the way, we hear a lot from him, said that if Kiev's involvement in the attack on the concert hall is proven, all those involved must be tracked down and killed without mercy, including officials of the state that committed such an outrage. By the way, it's interesting because they're immediately associating all of this with Ukraine so that Russia can strengthen its position on the danger of Ukraine being allowed to even exist on a small level, militaristically speaking, and this will undoubtedly complicate the Russia, the relationship between Russia and the United States of America and Russia and the member nations that surround Russia. This is going to become very volatile, and we can see evidence of this right away. This is an interesting one. Uh, Mikhail uh, Poldyak, an advisor to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, denied Ukraine's involvement in the concert hall attack which, by the way, they have to deny that for a lot of reasons. And this is the quote, Ukraine has never resorted to the use of terrorist methods. Uh, this was something he posted on X. Everything in war will be decided only on the battlefield. Well, we know that that could absolutely nothing could be further from the truth because we understand some of Ukraine's tactics in the past with respect to the, uh, to the goal of simply confusing uh, what is actually happening and gaining an advantage through the... Um, uh, through the confusion that's created by attacks like this. We, we've seen this happen, and it's absolutely uh, not true. But pay attention to this. This is really interesting. John Kirby, spokesman for the White House National Security Council, said Friday that he couldn't yet speak about all the details, but that the images are just horrible and just hard to watch. I think it's really interesting that Kirby would say this. Let me quote uh, something he said as well. He said, our thoughts are going to be with the victims of this terrible shooting attack. And he goes on to say, there are some moms and dads and brothers and sisters and sons and daughters who, have got the, who haven't gotten the news yet. This is going to be a tough day. Now, this is really interesting because to see the United States of America take uh, somewhat of an empathetic position with respect to this speaks volumes as into the idea of who they think coordinated this and what's going on there. More on that to come. We'll probably talk about that in some videos to come because there are some complications that are beginning to rise to the surface regarding the United States involvement in a campaign against Russia. And we'll talk about that at a later time. Let me read this other paragraph. It's really important. It says, the attack followed a statement issued earlier this month by the U.S. Embassy in Moscow that urged Americans to avoid crowded places in the Russian capital in view of eminent plans by extremists to target large gatherings in Moscow, including concerts. The warning, which was issued hours after Russia's top security agency said it busted a cell of Islamic State group preparing an attack on a synagogue, was repeated by several other Western embassies. Asked about the embassy's March 7th notice, Kirby referred the question to the State Department, adding, I don't think that it was related to the specific attack. Actually, I don't agree. I actually believe that there was warnings of this. I think that uh, Russia's officials believe that this warning was tied potentially to an attack very similar to this because the words of the United States of America reflects that. So you can't say, well, I don't think it's related to this because it was this exact thing that they were warning people of. Now, this is really, really important. Um, and I'll explain that in just a second. But Kirby does say, he says, I am not aware, this is his quote, I'm not aware of any advanced knowledge that we had of this terrible attack. Now, the article goes on to say, Putin, who extended his grip on Russia for another six years uh, in the March uh, 15th through 17th presidential vote after a sweeping crackdown on dissent earlier this week, denounced the Western warnings as an attempt to intimidate Russians. And this is his quote, all that resembles open blackmail and an attempt to frighten and destabilize our society. That's what he says. Now, this is interesting because one other uh, note that I should uh, read, and of course I talked about this before, but I'll still read this paragraph again. It says, in October 2002, Chechen militants took about 800 people hostage at a Moscow theater. Two days later, Russian special forces stormed the building and 129 hostages and 41 Chechen fighters died, most of them uh, from effects of a narcotic gas Russian forces uh, used to subdue the attackers. And in September 2004, about 30 Chechen militants seized a school in Beslan in southern Russia, taking hundreds of hostages, and the siege ended in a bloodbath two days later where more than 330 and about half of them children were killed. So this is very interesting because all of these things being put together gives us 
an understanding of a certain internal conflict that's taking place in Russia, specifically with Islamic terrorists, and how it would appear as though these terrorists are moving with one specific purpose and accomplishment seeking to bring in the mind while there are outside forces like the United States of America who are seeking to accomplish other things for different reasons. All of this tells me, and if you think that everything I've talked about sounds confusing and is a big mess, that's because it is. All of what we're seeing, I think, is going to contribute to the understanding that we have that Russia is going to grow more aggressive and more violent about the way that it handles things, and it is going to continue to unapologetically use force in accomplishing whatever it deems necessary in order to create the appropriate security, both internally and externally, and all of those are going to contribute to the view that the world has of it and the hands-off approach that they're going to continue to start taking as we know changes are happening. Folks, Russia is not finished yet. And I can tell you this right now, as you're beginning to see all of these things happening, we are watching the beginning of a greater level of destabilization taking, you know, taking place. And we know that what's going to end up happening as a result is we are going to see not only a lot of uh, uh, loss of life, but we're going to see a geopolitical shifting taking place, not just in the Middle East, but in Western and Eastern Europe for that matter, as we watch Russia begin to change how it approaches and deals with these things. And I can promise you this right now, hold on to the seat of your pants and pay attention to news that comes out of Russia over the next few weeks, because we're going to see a lot of things that are going to hint us in the direction of all of the themes that we've just discussed. It's big news, folks. There's a, it's too early to be able to tell what exactly is happening, but I can tell you these are the things we need to be looking for. All right? The Bible doesn't lie when it talks about what's happening in the future, and we're beginning to see things begin to fall in place. It's absolutely amazing. All right? Love you guys. God bless you. Keep fighting the good fight. Oh, and by the way, we will continue to bring information your way about this. I suspect that my live stream on Thursday, I'll spend some time talking about this at length. All right? God bless you guys. We love you. God bless you.